everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. The original malted milk. You ever wonder what I mean when I say that? Simply this. The successful combining of rich, full cream milk, wheat, and finest malted barley was first discovered by Mr. William Horlick over 50 years ago. It was the first time in history that whole milk had been successfully reduced to powder form in combination with extracts of the malted grain. His discovery proved to be one of the most important and far-reaching in the history of medical dietetics. Ever since, Horlicks has been used and recommended by physicians the world over for a wide variety of dietary uses. And ever since, Horlicks has been known as the original malted milk. Look for this mark when next you are buying malted milk. It readily distinguishes Horlicks from the many cheap imitations now on the market. It is your guarantee of quality and results, and your safeguard against inferior products. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, last Friday, Squire Skimp was tried in Lum's Justice of the Peace Court for operating a theater in violation of a city ordinance in Pine Ridge. And Lum ordered his place closed and assessed a fine of $50. Now, as the Pine Ridge Planetarium is the only theater in town, the old fellows are doing a big business. As we look in on our old friends today, we find Lum and Cedric Weehunt in the box office of the theater just before the evening performance. Abner is just entering. Listen. Why ain't you in there taking up tickets, Abner? Well, Elizabeth's taking them up for me. She likes to sit there and speak to everybody when they come in anyway. Mm. Looks like we're going to have a full house again tonight. Yeah, yeah, might now. All the seats are took now. <laughs> mm. Expect you better get on up there in the booth, Cedric. Be time to start here directly. Yes, Mom. Uh, ain't supposed to start till 7.30, though. But you can run some of them slides so to keep the audience from getting the impatience. You want me to run that slide telling the women to take off their hats? Yeah, I better run that. And run that in about no whistling or stomping your feet or loud talking aloud. And, Cedric, uh, tell Grandpa to come here a minute, too. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, uh... Hey, well, there comes Jim Higgins and his family. First time I saw him out to the show. Yeah, well, River's been up. I don't have to make a good call. Howdy, Jim. Good evening, Miss Higgins. Yeah, how are you, Mom? Oh, first rate. How's yourself? Uh, all right, I reckon. Fine-looking bunch of children you got there, Jim. <laughs> Must take after their mama. Yes, yeah, so how much <laughs> are you going to cost to get in here, Mom? Oh, uh, adults is uh, 25 cents a piece. That'll be half a dollar for you and your woman. And, and we'll run all the young and through at 10 cents a head. That'll be a dollar and 10 cents. Just give me a dollar and we'll call it even. Well, I, I better tell Elizabeth to let them all in, Mom. Well, I can give them all tickets, Abby. Oh, oh. Hey there, Jim. Much obliged. Hope you enjoy the show. <laughs> I thought he cost him something. He brings that bunch of his to the show, don't he? Uh, did you send for me, Ron? Uh, oh, yeah, Grandpa. I just wanted to tell you to start playing that piano in there. Entertain the folks till the picture starts. Well, I've been playing it for the last half hour. Well, I couldn't hear you out here. I just suppose you hadn't started yet. Oh, yeah. He's been playing. I could have told you that, Mom. I had to know that's what you wanted with him. <laughs> Yeah, uh, play that Gordy Nelly again, Grandpa. That's my favorite. Yeah, go ahead, Grandpa. That's all I want. Yeah, all right, Mom. Hey, hey, how about getting some tickets here? Well, hello, Dick. Hey, howdy, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of show this you got tonight, fellas? Why, it's an uncommonly good one, I reckon, Dick. It's come high recommended. Yeah, well, give me three. The wife and Arthur went on in. Here, now, no, no, no. Just cut that out now. We don't want to charge you nothing, Dick. Just put that money right back in your pocket. Come back here. No, no, you're not going to do that, Mom. I'll see you after the show. Oh, for goodness sake. There's a fine fellow, you know. It hadn't been for him, we wouldn't have been doing all this business. Oh. Well, we're going to have to get some more seats for this place, too, Ron. There's an awful lot of folks had to stand up Saturday night. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can rent some more of them chairs in the county seat. Yeah, I might could get them from a lodge hall now that Squire's closed up and ain't used them. Well, I don't know. Squire leased them for three months, you know, and Mose Moot says they're going to make him pay the rent on the hall over there where he uses a show or not. Well, he ain't going to have no show in there, I can tell him that right now. That place is closed up for good. We have to rent them from Squire, though. As mad as he is at us, he's more than likely want to charge us two or three classes for him. Yeah, I doubt he'd let us have a call, even. Wait a minute. Hello? Pine Ridge Planetarium, and I'm at his talking. Oh, uh, the 40s of 1934. Yes, Ma. Oh, my, it's supposed to be uncommonly good. 
No, starts at 7.30 sharp. Yeah, I think you can make it all right. It's, uh, let's see, it's 25 after now, according to my time. All right, Miss Keller. I'll have Cedric hold the show up so you can get here. Yeah, howdy, George. Right. Mama be through there in a minute. Not at all, not at all. Goodbye. Yeah. Hello there, George. Oh, hello, Mom. All right, sir. Much obliged to you. Hope you enjoy the show. Well, there's a fellow Lama that owes everybody in town. Can't raise money to pay his debt, but he can always go to any kind of a show that comes to town. Yeah, he owes us a bill down at the store we never will collect. Yeah, like them two little girls of Homer Rankin. Come in the show there a while ago, and that family has been on the relief all winter, to my own knowledge. Well, they never paid nothing, though, ain't they? Huh? They never paid nothing. I seen them standing out there in front looking at the posters, and I just give them them tickets. <laughs> More likely the first time they've ever had a chance to see a show. I telephoned the sea strong she lives next door to them, had every go and tell her mama where they's at. Yeah, <laughs> well, I was going to say it. How many, please? Huh? Oh, howdy, Snake. Howdy. Uh, what does it cost to get in this joint? Why, 25 cents for eight hours. That's what you wear. Oh, uh, what'd you call me? Uh, nothing. Uh, admission is a uh, quarter snake. Well, that's 25, 20 cents too much anyway. Give me a ticket, though. Yes, sir. There you are. Well, uh, just put it on the books. I ain't got no money with me. I'll pay you later. Well, here, Snake, we ain't got no credit card. Uh, let, uh, let him go, Abner. Uh, Don't want to get no argument with him about it. Oh, uh, he never will pay it so long. Well, I'd rather give him a ticket and have a Lucas over. Well, uh, so there's a fellow that'll go clean out of his way to do something on that Snake Hogan. Yeah. Poor little wife and children here stayed over at the house by themselves. Uh, never thinks about taking him out to nothing. Yeah, sure, I bet that they ain't saw a show in five years. Well, I don't suppose them children are here that ever saw one. No, more like they're not. More than like that. You know, I wouldn't mind to let them in for nothing, am I? Wish we could get the business built up to where we was making enough money to just let six folks of that in free for nothing. Just let all the children in town in for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be a fine thing? Yeah, I'd love to do that. Of course, a uh, place would be jammed with them every night all along. Yeah, I don't believe we'd lose a thing by it, am I? Children's folks would have to come along with them. They'd buy tickets, of course. I believe we'd help business to where well, we'd make money. Oh, my goodness. Look, come here, Abner. Look here. Well, who? Watch him. Get down here to where he can't see you. Oh, oh, get up from there, Abner. He ain't going to bother us. Now, now, I ain't going to give him no chance. Before he's going to get even with us for closing his place up. Well, he can't hurt us unless on the inside the box office here. Well, he can shoot through it, can he? Oh, he ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> Might start arguing or something, but that's about all. Just let me handle it. Well, howdy, Squire. Well, good evening, man. Good evening. How's business? Why, pretty good, Squire. The house is nearly full tonight. Well, yeah, this looks like it might be a pretty good picture you got here tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be uncommonly good. Yes, well, you men ought to do a nice business here now. It's my place. It's closed up over there. Yeah, I sort of hate that, Squire. I don't feel just right about that. Well, I don't blame you, Lum. There wasn't anything else that you could do. It was a law, and it was up to you as Justice of the Peace to enforce it. Well, I'm proud you feel that way about it, Squire. Oh, yes, yes. It's no hard feelings, Lum, not at all. I was a little mad at first, of course, but <laughs> after I got to thinking it over, well, I realized that that place over there mine was a fire hazard. And before I'd risk the lives of my friends and neighbors here in Pine Ridge, I'd rather the place be closed. Well, that's mighty nice of you to look at it that way, Squire. I want to shake your hand. <laughs> well, all right, Lon. Yeah. Well, just let bygones be bygones. Yeah, sure. Uh, better give me a ticket. I think I'll go in and see the show tonight. No, here, here now, Squire. Here's a ticket, but I don't want no money. No, so you just feel free to walk right in this show any time you want to. Won't cost you a cent. Glad to have you. No, no, I don't want to do that at all now, Lum. I'd rather pay him away. No. Well, we don't want to charge you nothing. No, no I wouldn't now. think I would appreciate it, Lum, but I want to pay him away just like anybody else. Well, I'll see you later, then. All right, sir. Well, I'll find two good ones. Well, sir, did you ever have such a surprise in your life? <laughs> Hey, Granny, he ain't such a bad sort of fella after all, is he? Well, I don't know, Mom. I just can't trust that fella. When he gets to talking too nice that way, well, that, that's when I get scared of him. Oh, sassy, 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 sassy. Well, I do. He just got off and got to thinking the whole thing over and seeing where we was right, and he was man enough to come down and admit to it. I admire him for it. Yeah, but now when he gets to pat me on the back that way, why? Well, He's more likely just looking for a good place to stick a knife in there. Oh, 
trouble with you, Abner. You hold a grudge too long. Why well, trying to do the right thing. You've got to learn to trust your fellow man, Abner. Well, I hope I'm wrong, but I still want to see Abner, Long. Huh? Come here, quick. Somebody's hurt. They've been at you. Oh, my goodness, Long. What's the matter, Grandpap? Who is it? Get out of my way, Abner. Yeah, who is it, Grandpap? Oh, my goodness. Look yonder, Long. Look yonder. Back there, everybody. Get in the way. Yeah, who is it? Who is it? Turn on the light, Cedric. Here, let me through here. Yeah, turn on the light, Cedric. Who is it? Who is it? Get back, everybody. Quick, Cedric. Oh, I'm down to the finish. I'll get far And something like this would have to happen, just as Squire had apparently reformed. And now, a letter from wealthy of Virginia. Dear Lum and Abner, I'm not a new user of Horlicks. I myself was raised on it over 40 years ago. I'm the mother of 13 children, the most recent being twins, a boy and a girl. They're wonderfully healthy, all because I used Horlicks before and after they were born. Previous to their birth, I was put on a strict diet, which left me very weak. <laughs> the people at the clinic gave me up, but I had other ideas. I took Horlicks. It picked me up tremendously. Then the twins came, and I nursed them myself. I'm certainly mighty proud of them, of course, but I'm every bit as proud of Horlicks. I hope that many other mothers heard that letter. If only all mothers knew the value of Horlicks, there would certainly be many more healthy babies. Horlicks, you know, is sold at all druggists. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.